Well, two men from Los Angeles were arrested on a variety of drug charges after a traffic stop in Bishop on Sunday, resulting in a large seizure of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine. Now, according to a press release from the Bishop Police Department on May 3rd at 10.02 p.m., Bishop Police officers conducted a routine, a routine traffic stop on a vehicle driven by suspect Julio Rangel. Uh, passenger Ramon Perez Figueroa was also inside the vehicle at the time of the stop and that stop was at North Main Street in Bishop in the Smart and Final parking lot. Now the press release states that during the contact officers became suspicious of the occupants and a search of the vehicle was conducted. Officers recovered suspected illegal drugs inside the vehicle one kilogram of cocaine, three pounds of methamphetamine, and 1.3 pounds of heroin. Ramon Anton Perez Figueroa, age 30, of Los Angeles, and Julio Salvador Rangel, age 30, also of Los Angeles, were arrested for possession of controlled substance, possession of controlled substance for sale, transportation of controlled substance, conspiracy to commit a crime, possession of narcotic controlled substance, transportation, sell of controlled substance, and transportation and selling of narcotics between counties and false identification to police. Both subjects were transported to the Inyo County Jail and Independence, being held on $250,000 bail and are awaiting arraignment. Further investigation revealed that suspect Figueroa had multiple warrants for his arrest under different names. Bishop Police Department would like to thank the Inyo Narcotic Enforcement Team, INET, for its assistance in this case. And several residential break-ins and burglaries have been committed in Mammoth Lakes recently. Now, a press release from the Mammoth Lakes Police Department reports the incidents occurred from May 2nd to May 5th at Snow Creek Phase 3 and 4. The suspect is described as a white male or Hispanic 20 plus years old, short hair, black pants, black t-shirt, black hat, and a large black backpack, also a skateboard, and he has short hair. Over the weekend, Mammoth Lakes police officers took reports of two residential burglaries and one attempted burglary in the Snow Creek area. Heavy equipment parked behind Fire Station 2 was also vandalized and may be related. Now, the suspect broke out glass windows to gain access to the deadbolts at the front door of the residences. No injuries were reported, and the residences were not occupied during the crimes. Now, the suspect, according to the press release, has a skateboard and has been seen skateboarding on Club Drive from Old Mammoth Road to the Snow Creek condos. Now, Tuesday morning of this week, when Mammoth Lakes Police Department officers came on duty, they became aware of another break-in that occurred in the same area. Now, upon arrival, officers made entry and cleared the condo of any potential suspects. Mammoth Lakes Police Department officers and property managers then discovered a total of eight units that had been broken into during the night or early morning hours. A witness described seeing a possible suspect leaving the area on foot early that morning. Mammoth Lakes Police Department officers assisted by deputies from the Mono County Sheriff's Department and Mono County DA investigators sealed a perimeter and searched the area on foot for several hours. The suspect at last report still at large. The numerous crime scenes are being processed for evidence. The Mammoth Lakes Police Department is asking people to please be on the lookout for anything or anyone who appears suspicious. Report suspicious activity to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department or call 911. Now for tips, you can also visit mammothlakespd.org or call the tip hotline at 760-934-3261. Well, last week in Mammoth Lakes, cooperating to compete a community conversation, Mammoth Ford and members of the Mammoth Lakes Town Council and Mono County Board of Supervisors, a conversation about the economic future of Mammoth, Mono County, and the entire east side. Here's more from Mono County Supervisor Stacy Corliss. So shifting from old school John Muir to some new school thinking, and that's the outdoor recreation economy. The good news, even though the fish might be shrinking and the snowpack wasn't so great, the outdoor recreation economy is booming. Uh, this uh, information
information I'm going to present, a lot of it is from the Outdoor Industry Association, the big trade, trade association. Uh, also, I have some uh, information from a visitor survey that Mono County did back in 2008, and as well as some statistics from uh, Visit California from 2012. And I'd be happy to provide any, any of this information or point you to the right resources. So the outdoor, um, the tourism recreation economy is good. This is the good news. Over $600 billion in U.S. consumer spending on outdoor recreation, $85 billion in California. Here in Mono County, visitors spent $481 million in 2012, a 6.7% growth over the previous year. So here's the outdoor, look at the outdoor recreation economy as uh, compared to other sectors. Um, we're bigger than pharmaceuticals, who knew? <laughs> is huge. We need to take advantage of this. This is an opportunity. So here's another, some other background information. Um, outdoor recreation is essential to the American economy, contributing to other economic sectors. In the same way here in Mono County, recreation obviously feeds into other economic sectors. We have hospitality, we have retail. These are all interconnected. So how, let's take a closer look at how recreation is connected to our tourism economy here in <coughs> Mono County. What do people do here? Well, according to Mono County statistics, 70% of visitors participate in outdoor recreation. And guess what the number one thing that they like to do here is? Hiking. They go hiking! <laughs> and uh, you know, Cheryl, Cheryl Strait, I hope we're ready to, to capitalize on the wild effect because we're going to have a big class of uh, Pacific Crest Trail and John Muir Trail through hiking. She went around the skiers, just remember. <laughs> yeah, we'll get her to do the part that she skipped. So 70% of visitors participate in outdoor recreation, about half of them hike. Um, we've got about 11% cycling, fishing, hugely popular, almost 40%. Now here's a, I thought this was interesting, 39% participated in some kind of photography, a workshop, or came here specifically to photograph the beautiful Eastern Sierra, so another great opportunity. And uh, there are other activities, this survey was done in summer, so skiing and, and winter sports didn't figure in as prominently. So again, it's our job, we have this, this great opportunity with the, uh, the outdoor recreation economy growing 5% annually between 05 and 2011 during a time when the many sectors were contracting. So we have to, it's our job to capitalize on this. It's our job to give people something to do once they're here. And I want to make sure everybody knows that um, arts and culture are a huge component of this too. I'm really focusing on outdoor recreation, but this is a, this is a big factor. It's something we need to talk about and pay attention to as well. So, what are we going to do with these opportunities? If we get it right, we will be the Eastern Sierra. This was something that came, the part of the survey that the county did back in 08. The phrase California's Eastern Sierra, what resonated highest, got the best results in the polling of, you know, say Mono County or Bodie or Mammoth or Bishop, California's Eastern Sierra. So let's be the Eastern Sierra. Let's develop a shared vision including and beyond snow for a regional playground and regional brand. Let's speak the same language. And for those of us in government, this is really important and difficult to do. We need to make this shared vision adopted policy in all our giant plans and visioning and the documents we, we produce, the meetings we go to. This has to be adopted policy across the board. When our visitors come here, they don't know if they're in Mono or Inyo or on BLM park. We've got to think across the borders, across administrative boundaries. And we've got to agree on some things to do. You know, I've been here, I've met with our district ranger, John Rakelberg, and that, that's really the message I get from him is, you know, if, if everybody could just agree on a couple things to do and then come and talk to us about it, we can get these things done. So let's capitalize on the shared vision by improving on what's already here. Let's get it right. And thank you to Alicia Benos of the county's economic development wonderful photo. Let's get it right. Because if we don't, we're going to watch our recreation infrastructure crumble and decay. The, the money isn't there. No 
one, no, no government agency has this magic pot of money that's going to fix everything. We've got to get creative. We've got to do it together. Otherwise, we'll go into circular, circular firing squad mode by competing for resources, each trying to grab for a dollar and tearing them apart. Or we'll argue about what to do first and get nothing done. <laughs> we don't want to be those guys. So let's, let's get it right. All right, we'll have more from Cooperating to Compete in future broadcasts. We'll be back with more news.